For a while now, I've been thinking, it'd be really cool if I could fly a tiny whoop with ducks, indoors, outdoors, that had better than analog video. Today, I'm going to show you something that takes care of what I've been wanting. Hey everybody, I am Bacon Ninja, and today we're going to talk about the Mobula 7 HD Zero Edition. This is a happy model Mobula 7 in partnership with HD Zero that delivers HD video in the size of a Mobula 7 75mm whoop. It's pretty awesome. For a long time now, I've been wanting a whoop that does more than analog. Analog video is analog video, it's never great. But this whoop may just be exactly what I was looking for. It gives me the HD0 HD system in a Whoop that is still light and small in a really well-known frame by a company that's known for Whoops. Happy model. So today we're going to get this thing on the bench and take a look at it. Let's head over there. And here it is, the Mobula 7 HD0 edition. It does use the V4 Mobula 7 frame, which is nice and durable, yet flexible. Uh, I put it through a lot of crashes, and I got no cracks or anything like that. For the canopy, they are using a hard plastic clear canopy uh, to house the Runcam HD0 Nano up here in the front. It does come with a little TPU lens protector for this Nano camera. It might keep sliding back a lot, but you know you get the point, what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, they actually have used some really nice stack screws to attach this canopy that go all the way through the full stack and into the bottom of the frame. Uh, I'm really happy with the screws they use there. And speaking of screws, it does come with an extra set of screws in the box as well as some screws for the motors, an extra set of props, a prop removal tool, and an extra canopy just in case you damage it somehow. Under this canopy, we have the HD0 Whoop board, which is capable of 200 milliwatts. No smart audio on this thing, uh, but you know you can do it with the HD0 stick commands, which I did just fine. It's really no big deal. Uh, to protect our camera between the Whoop board and the camera, they did insert a piece of foam. I believe that was a recommendation made by Nick Burns, uh, and it's very helpful for when this thing you know, bounces around in the front when it gets hit. The, the foam there will protect the Woot board from being damaged. A couple of things about the Woot board. The MIPI cable is right on the edge here. So you will want to put something on this MIPI cable to retain it or else you may lose it in a crash. That something should be a soft glue that's silicone based. So something like E6000 or Welder. Or in my case, I use Shoe Goo. It's very available in a lot of stores. I just put a little dab on the edge right there. And it will retain this MIPI in the instance of a crash. You want to do the same thing with a UFL on the other side because if that UFL comes off mid-flight and you don't notice somehow, you will burn up this Whoop VTX in a hurry. And on the back side of the VTX, we have the programming cable so you can do a firmware update. Uh, you will probably want to do a firmware update to this thing when you first get it because HD0 is updating their firmware all the time. So be familiar with that process. Go watch a video about it. If you aren't, uh, it will definitely be something you want to do. Under that Whoop VTX, we have the Happy Model all-in-one flight controller down here with the motor plugs, a USB-C for programming, an XT30 for your 2 or 3S batteries that this flight controller all-in-one is capable of, and tucked away, let me find it, let me find it, let me find it, tucked away right here is the Express LRS Ceramic Square Antenna. This has an SBI an SPI Express LRS receiver built in, and it is flashed as part of Betaflight with Express LRS 2.0 already. So if you are using any version starting with a 2 on your TX, this RX will bind up just fine to it, and you'll be good to go. And I was able to get telemetry and all the good stuff out of it with my Express LRS receiver. Uh, for motors, they are going with the Happy Model 1102-9000 KV motors with a 1.5 millimeter prop shaft. We'll take a look at that here in a minute in the measurements. And uh, as you can see, we are not using any prop screws. They are just press on. For props, we have the 40 millimeter newbie drone props, which uh, we'll talk about later in the video. Uh, but yeah, they're on there. You'll notice I'm missing one. We'll talk about that when we get to that point of the video. Uh, for the VTX antenna, they are using just a standard dipole hanging out the back here. I didn't have any issues with that. 
it uh, it didn't really take any damage. It flipped out of the way when it needed to, and it never made its way into the props. It's nice and protected there. Uh, on the bottom, again, we have the XT30, which is just long enough. I don't, I don't think I'd want it any longer or any shorter. It worked out pretty well. And we have the standard Mobula 7 battery cage here. Now, for batteries, I am going with the 450 milliamp hour tattoo high volt battery and that is because it fits just perfectly in there. So you want to be very careful with the kind of battery you select for this quad because if you do a 2S or 3S it has to fit in this and you are liable to crack this thing open if you just go squishing a big 3S battery in there somehow. So be careful about what kind of batteries you use. We'll measure that here in a second so you can get an idea. Uh, but I am going with this pack because it's, it's really good and it fits in there nice and snugly real securely and uh, yeah I like it so let's take some measurements on this thing and see what it looks like so it looks like it is right at 75 millimeters motor post to motor post it is indeed running a 1.5 millimeter prop shaft there's plenty of room for 40 millimeter props in these ducts the battery cage is a hair over 17 millimeters wide and the battery cage is just a little over 14 almost 15 millimeters deep on the scales this quad weighs right at 40 grams and with the tattoo 450 mod pack we're looking at 68 grams all up so now that you've seen the specs on the bench let's fly this thing inside a house a lot of people will have questions about flying a 2s 75 millimeter whoop in the house i did do it in acro mode with no motor output limit or throttle curve or anything crazy like that and it went just fine uh, i will be running it at 200 milliwatts on the vtx with express solar s at 250 hertz so let's go take a look at that footage all right, so I'm going to take off my workbench here, and I am running the Tattoo 450 Ma pack, high volt charged. Uh, I'm fair warning, I'm not going to finish this pack, but you will see why. And I apologize ahead of time for the clutter in my house. Uh, we picked up, but we have small children, so it's impossible to keep it clean. And we do have family in town, so my wife is sitting there with her mom in the living room looking at me like I'm crazy flying this whoop through the window here. But the whole time I was flying this, I thought, man, this uh, is doing pretty well on light transitions. It's, there's a lot of light transitions in my house. It's not a great layout for flying whoops. It's basically just one big oval here that I can get to. But there's a lot of dark and light, and you don't see those too drastically with this camera. The little nano camera is doing pretty well in this situation. I am running 200 milliwatts, and for the VRX, I am running the new HD0 VRX with some Lumineer Axie Omni antennas on the top and some TrueRC X-Air patches on the side. But I'm not getting any sparkle. I'm going to go under the table here. My wife looks at me like I'm crazy. Uh, but I'm not getting any weird sparkle or breakup. The control link is good on Express LRS. You can see down there on the, the bottom right that I'm getting 100% normally all the time for this SPI receiver. It does come flash with Express LRS 2.0, I believe. It's definitely a two-dot version of Express LRS on the uh, SPI, which is built into Betaflight, so you can't flash it separately. It's good that they have the 2.0 on there so that you can run newer firmware on your RX and it will still work with this SPI TX. As far as the tune goes, indoors, it went really well. Uh, I think the stock tune is, you know, it probably could use a little bit of tweaking, but it's pretty good for a stock tune. I am flying this in Acro uh, and I'm not pushing too hard here but it's it's handling it all really well i don't get any weird yaw washout. it's very responsive uh, it stops when i want it to stop and it doesn't really give me any prop wash uh, i'm trying to hit that gate a little bit it, the, the only thing i could really do in my living room is a cube gate i do have some other pvc gates but they're just too big so i try to incorporate the cube gate a little bit uh, but i'm just going to whip around the house a little bit more here uh, trying to get some faster circles going try to put it in some smaller spots and see how responsive it is. But I think this Mob 7 is holding up really well in the house. I, I have usually flown 1S swoops. Uh, I have the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 that I fly in the house as well. And it does nowhere near this well. This has a lot more power and authority than smaller whoops. This 75 millimeter frame is a great whoop platform. And the V4 frame that this is running on specifically is just kind of a beast. Uh, it took a lot of crashes into walls and held up really well. No frame cracks at all during my indoor flights. Uh, I was kind of surprised. I did crash quite a bit. I ran like 20 packs in the house and crashed quite a few times and it handled them all just perfectly with flying colors. 
And as far as the voltage sag on 2S, I really didn't feel it. On 1S, I will always feel voltage sag. You get a couple of minutes in, and I'm three, a little over three minutes in on this one, and you start to feel it sag quite a bit, and it would get really disappointing, and the whole experience would change. On 2S, I really never felt it sag. Now, I didn't run this down to below 3.5 volts on this run, and like I said, I'll show you why that happens here in a minute. But I am just kind of going back and forth and trying to feel out if it's going to do anything funny, and it never did. It's a solid platform. I never had any weird experiences with the video signal. And you can see I start to kind of stumble here a little bit, and uh, you'll see why in a second. We got some kittens, and the kitten decided to climb me in the middle of my indoor run on what was the most consistent pack I had all evening. So now I'm just bumbling around everywhere with this kitten hanging on to me with its claws, and I bump into a wall, and there it is. So that's all for the indoor flights. Thanks, kitten. And since this quad does run on 2S packs, it has enough power to fly outdoors too. So I have a little snip of that. Now, a disclaimer about my outdoor footage, it has been nothing but windy in my part of the world, windy and rainy lately. So the best I could do was flying out in the wind. So I'll be flying this in Acro 2S, again, no throttle output limits on my rates in 20 mile an hour wind. So we're gonna see if the Mob 7 HD0 handles wind the way you would expect. Let's take a look at that footage. So you see the wind is blowing on those trees out there. The best day I could get was today, and it was seriously 20 mile an hour wind with gusts up to 30. So flying a whoop outside is not ideal at all in these conditions. And it was really a good test of the Mob 7. Uh, with the 2S power, it held up pretty well in the wind. You could see it's really, really bobbly. The tune does not like this much wind. Uh, it's just trying to maintain its authority. So I'm just going to hold it there for a second. You can see how bobbly it is. But I went ahead and set up some gates in my yard. You can see the gates. And uh, just doing some simple maneuvers. Outdoors, the Runcam Nano looks really good, actually. Uh, you know, it looked good inside as well. But even in bright sunlight, it's, it's doing really well to adjust to the different lighting conditions. Uh, and this quad is really responsive, even in this wind. I had a hard time actually getting it into the gates just because of the wind but you know there were occasions where i could line it up and the wind wasn't gusty and i got through the gates just fine it's really agile uh, i am flying this in acro mode with the same tattoo 450 milliamp hour high volt charged batteries uh, but it's doing better than i would expect out of a whoop in the wind i have tried to fly several whoops uh, you know small cine whoops and 1s whoops in wind and it is just a no-go yeah, you can see I kind of got blown into a gate there a second ago. Uh, again, I'm not going to finish this whole pack because it was just terrible to fly in this kind of wind. You can see the trees just blowing around like crazy. Uh, but this whoop is out there in it, and it's keeping up. It's blowing stuff down the street. But the whoop is definitely hanging in there and doing it. And it's getting low, uh, low to the ground and maintaining the authority that it has. You know, that 2S power is really good for outside. Uh, so I think this is a really well-rounded whoop. All right, let's go talk about it a little bit more. So it was rough, but this thing definitely did handle the wind, and I would say it did more than handle indoors as well. I'm pretty happy with this quad. Now, the price of this quad as of today is $199.99. It is limited stock sometimes, so if you're thinking about picking one up, definitely jump on it when you see one. Uh, but before you do that, let me talk to you about a couple of gripes that I have with this quad. Let's go back to the bench so we can take a look at them. So I have to say my biggest complaint about this quad is the props. <laughs> These newbie drone props. Like I said, you'll, you'll notice I'm missing one here. And it did come with a spare set of props, but I'm totally missing one because I used them all while flying this. I'd bump into a wall and it would flex just a little bit and the prop would strike inside. And because of the design of these props, you can see there's a little gap between where the prop shaft comes in and the connection between it and the blades. It would crack right there and then just fly off into the nether. I would never see it again. I also had one instance where I actually broke one of the blades off of the prop. Uh, like I said, I think that was probably because of a strike to the frame. Uh, you can see the frame is pretty rubbed up in here with grass and cuttings from the props hitting it. Uh, but these three have held on pretty well. They've been on there for maybe 10, 10 batteries. 
uh, and they've held on pretty well. But I lost three out of the four spare props over the course of like four packs, which I was pretty disappointed with. So I will be switching the, the props out to some Jim Fan 40 millimeter props. Uh, but, you know, you get what you get, right? So I'm going to switch those out. They're okay. If, uh, if you like them, then you like them. Your mileage may vary. Mine did not go well. Uh, the other real complaint that I have is the camera angle availability. There's not a lot, uh, especially if you have this TPU print in here. You really can't go down very much at all. And every time you bump into something, it will bump the camera angle up. It seems like it always finds that camera in the right spot. Uh, so I found myself flying with more angle than I would have liked, way more often than I would have liked. If I take that TPU off, I might be able to get down a little bit more, but it still feels like there's not a full amount of travel before it bumps into the top of the canopy here. So if you're going to get this, plan on flying it maybe more angle than you're comfortable with until you get used to it, because uh, you just can't level it out to like something like 15 degrees. You're going to be 30 degrees and above in most cases with this drone. But other than those two complaints about this quad, I really enjoyed my time with it. I really did. For $199, you probably couldn't put this together yourself with the Whoop board, especially with the tune and, and all the good stuff that Happy Model has already done to it and sent out to its test pilots uh, and gotten worked out before you got it in your hands. You probably couldn't buy all the components, put it together and have that experience for that amount of money. Is it the perfect drone for HD, the perfect little tiny whoop in HD? No, it's not the perfect tiny whoop in HD. Uh, it could probably be a little bit lighter. The 1S board that they just came out with for HD Zero might solve that problem. So we'll see what comes down the road. But if you've been looking for an HD whoop, this is definitely a solid purchasing option. There's not a lot on the market for HD whoops, especially if you're doing something like DJI. I think there may be one little option and they weigh a ton. This is by far the lightest HD whoop on the market currently in production. So if you're on the fence about buying it or you're getting into the HD Zero system and you want something to fly in your house, but also tool around the yard a little bit, this is the perfect whoop for you, I think. Like I said, down the road, we may see a little bit lighter version of this, but today it's the one on the market that wins for sure. I was very happy with my time with the HD Zero whoop. And that's it. That is all I have for the HD Zero Mobula 7. Like I said, I really enjoyed my time with it. I'm definitely going to continue to fly this thing. I'm going to try the Jim Fan props and see if I like them better. Uh, I'm really hoping I do. The, the hub design looks a little bit different. So if you're in the market for some of those props, definitely leave a comment and I'll be happy to drop you a link to them or maybe down the road I'll let you know what I think about them. If you're interested and you see this you know, a week or so from now, I do have them coming in the next couple of days. So we'll see how I like those. If this video has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm very near 1,000 subscribers. And when I make it to 1,000, I'll be doing a giveaway. So definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll see when a video about a giveaway comes out. And you can sign up for it and take part in it. Maybe you'll win something. You never know. But anyway, thank you again for hanging out with me and taking a look at this little tiny whoop. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Mm -hmm.